This is the full game four VOD of the matchup between Gen G and FlyQuest from the quarterfinals of Worlds 2024. Ready into the draft. Let's go ahead and see what's going down. Gen G back on the blue side for the third time in this series. They will ban out the Ivern, the Skarner, and the Seraphine while FlyQuest responds with Yone, Aurora, and Jax. First pick, Ash for Gen G. Isn't surprising for anyone. Masu will be back on the Ezreal. Question is, will the Ash dominance continue in this series? Ash has looked so strong thus far. And it's FlyQuest who have to try to upset the balance here. What have they got cooking for this draft? They are at match point with who pretty much everyone considered to be the best team in the world coming into it. I'm, I don't know if I like this. I mean, I know we had slightly different opinions on that like game two draft as well, but right now FlyQuest is literally running it back. They've prioritized the Ezreal and the Orianna. The possibility of a Kassadin is right there. I don't expect Gen.G to pick it this early, but perhaps the idea from FlyQuest is they'll even look to ban it on the second rotation. One difference though, Jax is banned out, right? That so is a big difference. That is a pretty big difference here. You know, Renekton is up, so they could go Renekton Nidalee if they do want to go that angle. The Nidalee is locked in. We touched on this before. Over 81% win rate for Canyon. This is one of the only junglers in the world who gets the pro play Nidalee pass. This guy can make it work. He is outstanding on it and it's gonna be the Tristana. So this was actually banned by FlyQuest in the second phase against them. And that's when we ended up having, you know, these kind of different wrinkles in the draft, but instead it's gonna be double AD carry here for Gen G. But pairing with an Italy means they do need some frontline. They do need some support to yeah. actually create space for these carries. We've seen Rel fall to the wayside. It's been banned quite a few times by FlyQuest. Wouldn't be surprised to see it banned again here as Busio locks in the Rakan. But uh, so far, an identical draft to what FlyQuest drafted for themselves in game two. Earlier, we saw them come up with the Nunu and the Renekton. Perhaps those will be where we see big shifts. Of course, with the Jacks gone, maybe they want to run back the Renekton again. You guys know very well how comfortable Bupo is on the champion. Yeah. But the question is, how will they round out this draft? I'm not expecting something like a Sejuani. Maybe they want to go for something a little more aggressive, but you want something that can kind of keep up with the Nidalee in terms of clear speed. I mean, that's the point that we were making about the Nunu the first time we saw this matchup, yeah. is Nunu's not afraid of all the invading that Nidalee likes to do, of the high tempo that she can create, stealing away camps, getting there faster. The Xinjiao is going to be the first ban from Genji. Remember, this was Inspired's pick in the game one when FlyQuest first shocked everyone, took their first win in the series. Genji still paying respects back towards him in the jungle. Absolutely, and I think rightfully so. It did look really, really strong for Inspired. He performed very well on the pick. And uh, Nautilus is going to be that ban, so they are really trying to lock down some of these engaged supports that could cause problems here for Masu, for Quad as well on these carries, trying to make sure that they have the protection for them. And remember, Nautilus is another one of those champions that Gen.G had in the game to win that they got. And I'm so interested now, you know, do you go jungle on four here, uh, four inspired, or do they just go towards the Renekton as a denial, right? You know, or are you willing to, if Olaf isn't banned out, are you willing to leave the Renekton up and say, you take Renekton, I'm going to take Olaf and just beat you? I really like these bans from Gen.G, really trying to pinch inspired pool. I think from their perspective, they'd be happy to play into the Nunu again. But it uh, looks like the Renekton priority is going to come through for Whippo. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense. In my opinion, it is Whippo's best champion. It is a lot of comfort, and it's also a denial. Uh, you know, to me, it was either you take this or you are willing to hard counterpick it. So I do like the denial. We'll have to find out now where Keen wants to go because Renekton taken away. We have the Jax ban. You know, does he go towards just like a Kasante or something like that? Because they need some frontline, especially for the Ash. You have to have some champions that are going to create space for that Ash so you don't just get ran down by this Rakan Oriana combo plus the Renekton. All right, time's running out. What will be the fourth pick here for Genji? Okay. Oh, we're gonna see a, either top lane or support. Probably Falcon. support. Probably support coming in here, and it should be the Keen Sante coming through. Uh, famous for this pick, the guy is a monster on it. Definitely one of his best champs, if not his best champ. Uh, I think he is very, very strong on it. Also, Lahen's just known for his unique. I mean, this is the singed support guy, right? Yeah. Uh, we've seen him bring out the Maokai before. He's going to be bringing out again, primarily with the role of providing that extra utility for his team. And now, you know, you have to see how the early game is going to go for FlyQuest, because when you look towards the picks here for Gen.G, 
Really the only setup that they have for the Nidalee Spear is the Maokai, right? Which makes you believe they're going to be targeting down that bot lane. It is Rakan Ezreal, very weak early 2v2 here that has been drafted for FlyQuest, which makes you really think, okay, is it a lane swap? And if it is a lane swap, can you avoid giving over that intel to Genji to try to dodge these lanes that could be problematic? One of the big problems I feel FlyQuest ran into in game two was that Whippo kept running into Paze. The Ash into the Renekton matchup was doing so much damage to Whippo. And I think that they need to do a good job of kind of getting him out of that matchup as quickly as they can. The early swap is going to be incredibly important. You talked about it. We're expecting it to come through yeah. from FlyQuest uh, to try and avoid this Ash lane for the Ezreal. We also have to remember, you know, in that second game, you know, when Jin did really run over them, but also took this really bad trade, got chunk low, and then he got dove, right? Yeah. And that dive was really what set him so far behind. Because when you are playing this standard lane swap setup, where your top laner is going top and actually laning with the AD carry to get experience and then TPing bot, if you die on that dive, your game is toast. Because you have no teleport to get back, you're gonna lose plates, you're gonna lose experience, and you're gonna fall so far behind. All right, boys. Game number four, match point for FlyQuest. I don't think practically anybody was expecting us to be in this position coming into this series today. The odds seemed so overwhelmingly in Genji's favor, but FlyQuest has just responded to this absolute massive challenge beautifully. And I don't think there was a single serious prediction for FlyQuest. Not one. Oh. I think there's absolutely none. And if they are able to pull this off, I do think it would be the single greatest upset in League of Legends history. I mean, that's always a fun debate, right? Because you can always go through and you can, the context of the time, but I, it's hard to disagree because of the context of the situation, right? The closest one would be the G2 RNG yeah. series back from 2018. Or TLIG. Yeah, or... right. And it's just, it's always about the context because it's always these situations where you're going up against a reigning champion of something yeah. versus an underdog who is not expected to really do that well at the tournament. And uh, yeah, I mean, Genji, the reigning MSI champions, while the second seed from the LCK after the Swiss stage, people looked at them and said, perhaps this team really is the stronger version. They just lost a single best of five. Yeah. Um, but FlyQuest, they're, they're poking holes in Genji's drafts. They're finding creative angles. And, and quite frankly, they are executing better on a lot of the team fights, which is big, their biggest strength throughout the year. Absolutely, and that's one of the things where we, you know, as the LCS kind of representatives here, have never really had that. It's always felt like if you get into a good position against the LCK or against the LPL, you're just going to get outplayed in the team fight, right? And watching some of these fights, it really does feel like Quad and Masu are stepping up and Busio and Inspired and Bubble are all playing to a level where you're like, you know what, if the game is even, maybe we just win. And I think that is a feeling that I haven't really had before. Jovi immediately jumping in on quad, seeing Busio show up to apply some pressure here to the mid lane. Jovi losing the flash at level one. I think the important thing to remember is uh, FlyQuest. Oh, Whippo, that is not a good trade, my friend. No, sir. Oh, that is was, a very bad trade. He was trying to give up his health to get experience. So he's trying to stay in range of that XP, and that's why he was that far up. But it does make it pretty dicey. We can see, though, we have the knowledge that Canyon is down on bot lane. There is a ward that's down there as well. So Flycus also has that info. So I don't actually think that they are worried right now about a dive. Thanks to that ward, you can barely see it on the minimap that does spot him out. Okay, recall game two. That was the one that Genji won. These two FlyQuest players were on the exact same champions in that game, and Whippo taking bad trades early on, sacrificing too much HP, is what enabled Genji, who were also playing the, the Nidalee for Canyon in that game, to facilitate dives, to get early leads, and snowball that game. Now, immediately, Busio again going to claim another flash from a Gen G carry. I mean, how about this play? And now Lehens, he's going to have to flash or he's in trouble. Yeah, Lehens, victim of the Arctic assault, as inspired, just trying to make sure that that summoner spell is committed there, too. That's one, two, three flashes in three minutes. Exactly. Three minutes in, three flashes forced. FlyQuest outplaying Gen G on the map. They got the preferential lanes as well. It's Masu laning against. Keens Cassante, he's just having a free farm down there. We can see that Pace is getting sent down towards bot now, and Chovy is getting pressured here by Quad. Chovy, of course, up CS as he always seems to be, but FlyQuest got to be really happy with how these lanes are going. You can see the wave is going to push towards Masu, um, but we'll see if they do want to try to swap away as the Ash arrives. Big credit to Busio. He's been involved in all of these early plays. The Rakan showcasing how valuable of a pick it can be in the early game.
Nice TP coming through from Chovy as he is getting the slight better of Quad in terms of the isolated one versus one on this Tristana. But ultimately, a relatively calm early game. No significant advantages gained either side. Standard lanes have now been returned to. And we talked about it a little earlier in the series, but again, I just want to praise Busio for this, this absolute growth as a player since the last time yeah. we saw him on the international stage back at MSI. MSI was the first time a North American team was eliminated in play-ins at an international event, and it was FlyQuest. That's a tough pill to have to swallow. Busio had a really rough tournament, and now he's bouncing back here in Worlds, having some amazing plays. Masu has carried so many performances here for this team, and they're both North American players. North America has always had this stigma of too many imports. Where's the NA talent? It's right there in FlyQuest's bottom lane duo, and they are both playing an amazing series. It absolutely is. And, and when you put it in the context of this is a team that got knocked out in plans at MSI and is now one game from taking away Gen G's semifinal slot, from knocking out a heavy tournament favorites, you have to look at how much they have improved, at how hard they have worked to be able to get where they are. Certainly. And uh, it just goes to show the amount of pressure that's falling onto the shoulders of Gen.G. If we look back to MSI, not even BLG pushed them to five games. It was only top esports at that tournament. They won most of their series 3-1. And uh, now they find themselves with their backs against the wall. Their composition gives them some decent early game strengths. Once again, getting their hands on the Ash. Nidalee is a jungler for Canyon is someone that, I mean, just look at the farm already in the jungle. Canyon has been running around the map Stealing camps away from Inspired. He's about to tick over to level six. And uh, it's the downside of this matchup for Inspired. That absolutely is. I mean, Canyon is just farming up a storm. You can also see Chovy is pressuring heavily in mid lane. That is where the gold advantage is coming from, but it is slight. And the concern is, look at the gold there on Pays. Look at the farm on Pays. He lost his flash early. He's been running around the map trying to find good lane assignments, and he is really falling very far behind. Inspired and Busio both getting tagged there by the Scryer's Bloom critically. Let's them know that FlyQuest is looking at the mid lane, looking at Chovy, who is level six now on this Tristana. And Tristana's a champion that just has such amazing self peel capabilities with the rocket jump, with the buster shot. It's hard to make a play if you don't catch her completely by surprise. Canyon level six in this Nidalee, no troubles at all. Securing the first set of grubs. Genji going to get two of those immediately for themselves. As you can see, Whippo coming down to try to take a look at what's going on. Masu will force Keen all the way back from the wave down here in the bottom lane. Still got to pay enough respect to Cassante when he's close to the turret, but it's not nearly as big of a deal when he's not level six. And Inspired and FlyQuest, they're just going to trade these early neutral objectives, go after the dragon. Inspired, you guys already mentioned, he's a level and a half behind Canyon's Nidalee. He does not want any combat. It's a, it's a really good trade from Inspired. Right place, right time. You don't want to concede all objectives. We've seen that from uh, FlyQuest in game two, and that's one of the big annotations we, we are seeing here in this game. Again, though, you see Pays matching into this Renekton. He's having a bit of a rough time, but ultimately he's still in a fine position, has the level advantage, hasn't died early. Oh, Keen, nice use there of the knockback. Masu gonna be forced to use that first summoner spell to try to get away. Keen's coming in for the one, V2! He knocks him back! He knocks him down! The Cassante of Keen steps up! A massive play from Keen as he's able to just find a massive play. Masu doesn't even commit the flash, realizing that there's probably no way that he can get out of this situation. And Keen's Cassante is recognized for a reason, and he secures first blood for Gen.G. I mean, that is just absolutely massive there for Gen.G. A huge outplay here from Keen. He has the Q3 charged up. They don't respect it. He uses the shift to harass him aggressively. Then the Pathmaker into the Q3, ultimate of the tower. Masu realizes, you know what? I'm actually just dead. Flash is there on Keen. He has too many dashes when he is in the all out. The flash would not do anything for him, so he elects to hold on to it. But that over aggressive shift is punished expertly by Keen. How many times have I seen players, usually it's top laners, disrespect Cassante with his <laughs> third in Tofo Strike primed with all outs cooldown available close to his turret? It is one of the deadliest combos in League of Legends. I mean, Cassante. He's uh, what the copy pasta was made from. <laughs> He's uh, already doing great work for Genji on the rift, but it's important to always add that caveat of the overall gold state. And the reality is, even with that kill, Pays finds himself about 550 gold behind. As El was talking about it earlier, the experience and gold deficit 
that Pays has found himself in is is a pretty significant one. Absolutely, and a lot of that credit, you know, is deserved by Busio, who moved around the map, put that pressure on. You know, they were able to get a lot done with him. Fired and Whippo trying to put on pressure where they can. Uh, Canyon has maintained his about 500 gold advantage, but is not growing larger at the very least, therefore inspired. We'll see how Whippo does hang on now in this 1v1, because despite the farm advantage, he's actually down gold, and Keen has a really good buy after that 1v2 kill. Yeah, Keen's feeling great about his current place in the game. As Inspired showing up here after Chovy. Arctic Assault Flash to lock up the Gen G mid. And Chovy with a late flash wastes a summoner spell to still be dead. Chovy caught completely off guard there with a great gank from Inspired. Canyon wants to try and contest this crab, but he doesn't have a mid laner to help him. Whipple comes down. Another objective, a small one, albeit secure Baby for objective. FlyQuest. And you can see the pressure mounting on Gen G. That is not normally a mistake Chovy would make, wasting the flash with no health remaining. He knows he is one game away from his world's dream ending for this year. And he's been in this position many times before, by the way. The expectations for Chovy are not new. He's been regarded as a top tier talent for many years. And. Uh, even last year, falling short in the quarterfinals to PLG. I mean, Genji are trying to eradicate the history. We were talking about it earlier, right? We're talking about how Genji has been so domestically dominant, but internationally, they've never hit the level that they aspired to. They've gotten to the second highest step, but never that final step, never the world finals, never the world title. And now being this close, we'll see if they can bring it to a game five against FlyQuest as Whippo tries to flash away, going into Dominus here in a 1v4. But surely Gen G just get it done. Whippo can't stay alive. Lehens dancing with death there, but does stay alive. Now Gen G are just gonna drill through this turret health bar. And you look at the minimap, there's not a lot that FlyQuest can cross map for. They don't have a wave stacked up for the top lane tower plate. They will be able to get the grubs, but it's just kind of a small advantage gained as Crucially, Pays's goal difference is going to be reduced significantly. Getting the kills, getting the plates. Now that lead that Mazu had built has all but dissipated. It is, but they are going to be trying to trade back on this top side, giving the local gold here all towards Masu, farming up some of these plates. But it is going to be first tower here, you know, down on that bottom side for Gen G and establishing themselves a nice early gold lead, just above 1,000 gold in their favor. Big early lead there in the bottom lane for the LCK squad. 1,000 gold lead in total just for Keen over Whippo on this Renekton. We already saw Keen get the 1v2 outplay in the bottom lane with his experience on Cassante, with his mastery over this champion. You have to expect him to be in utter terror once these fights between the full teams start breaking out. Absolutely. I mean, Keen on this champion with that gold lead can take over a game. And FlyQuest, I think, are going to do what FlyQuest sometimes does best, slow down the pace of the game, play towards their win conditions, look towards some of the really powerful scaling that they do have. You have these really difficult to kill carries in the late game. You've got great engage. You've got good frontline. I think they can feel comfortable to slow it down, to play it a little bit, a little bit more reserved, and try to avoid some of this early game power that Keen and Canyon are going to have. Pays flashing away there. Quad with the threat with the shockwave, but now Genji coming right back in. Quad's gonna get locked up, has to flash away to try to survive. Canyon on the chase. Quad's about to die. 50 HP remaining, but an ice shield keeps him alive. King coming in with the all out. Busio flashes back over the wall. FlyQuest somehow live, but Genji easily win the fight. They're gonna use that tempo to put more damage into the tier one turret over here in mid. Keen overstepping his bounds a little bit here, has to try to step back away. Busio still hanging around too with about 300 HP. TP coming in from FlyQuest to reinforce the turret after losing two plates. And look at the map pressure that Genji has as well. They're keeping top pushed in. There was no wave for Whippo to really push in on the bot side and they collapse in mid for losing nothing. They get themselves more plates too, a clean collapse that should have really resulted in a kill. I think it was a bit of a misclick from Keen. I think he wanted to hit Quad, but he ended up hitting Busio. Ultimately, though, they get what they wanted. Now, Chovy and Canyon together up here, hanging around this top side. 
Masu on the Ezreal is very evasive, but man, if they ever catch him, he'll just pop instantly. Looking at the items coming online here, you can see first items completed for a couple of different players. Lee Andre's there for Canyon. Yes, Inspired has his first item fully completed as well. It is the locket. This is an advantage of playing a tank jungler versus a carry. You just get to buy the thrift store stuff, much cheaper price point. But when you also look at the mid lane, Quad is three quarters of the way to a fully stacked Seraph's Embrace. That'll be a big power spike once he can get those last 80 or so stacks. Certainly will be. We turn our attention now to the Rift Herald, though, as Genji's already setting up for it. You can see the vision control they have around the top side river. Chovy keeping the push in the top wave. Cassante on the bot lane. His TP is about to be available, and so he has another wave that he can catch and push out. The problem for FlyQuest is there's just like, there's not really any big points of pressure that they have access yeah. to right now. It's difficult to send Oriana off to a side lane. They're keeping Masu over there, whereas Genji have already brought Pays over. And the threat of that arrow onto Quad is something that he always has to be cautious of. Now they've moved him up towards the top side. They do have that top tower available to him, but the risk of, of a collapse from Genji is something you have to respect. MasterCard lane economy snapshot showing that yes, it's a small lead for Quad and for Busio, but the big story being told, Keen building that lead, again, a big part of that was the outplay in the bottom lane in the 1v2, and then Canyon naturally just using the pace of the Nidalee, the tempo this champion can guarantee to stay ahead of Inspire the entire time. Rift Herald now the target for Gen G, and FlyQuest can't really contest it. They just got to back away, so Gen G is going to enjoy another neutral objective. Yeah, they are, and I think that is kind of the advantage that they have earned for themselves with some of this early game power. Nice Scryer's trinket there. Does actually spot out that FlyQuest were trying to lay a trap. Inspired and Quad were waiting in that side brush, hoping that Chovy would overpush, but not going to be able to find a play. Drops the Herald immediately. They know that the mid tower is very low. There's no way for Masu to really contest with. And this should be another objective secured for Gen G. Yeah, Herald should just knock it over by itself. Kaboom! All right, needs one more auto attack to do it. Oh, wow! Oh. Okay, Masu saves the day. The turret has literally 20 HP out of 5,000. Calculated. It's a uh, <laughs> shockwave, top lane. Quad and Drupal, though. Inspired shows up to try to block it for him. Chovy flashing over, making the outplay to guarantee they get their man. But now Inspired and Busio are still looking to lock up the Gen G mid. Masu's there for a little bit of extra damage. Chovy doing everything he can to kite it out, but it ain't gonna matter. Inspired secures the kill. Canyon with a flash away from the grand entrance from Busio. FlyQuest making an even trade mid for mid. And at the end of the day, they got more summoners, actually, because they forced the flash off Chovy and Canyon. Quad didn't have his, so it's just that flash there traded by Inspired. Nice punch back here by FlyQuest, but again, it's the map play from Gen G. They are the masters of macro. They play the map so incredibly well. So meanwhile, they're pushing in bot, they're pushing in mid, they're shoving these waves, and they're constantly taxing your resources elsewhere. Quad gets spotted on awards. He's thinking about heading back to top lane. Bit of indecision as the collapse comes through from Genji. A nice shockwave to buy himself some time. The flash comes in from Inspired to help keep his mid laner alive. It's a really good ultimate, but then the flash, the follow through from Chovy as he sidesteps that Ezreal ult. It's unfortunate for Masu that he can't get the kill here. Chovy gonna throw out the ulti to create space between him and Masu. It means that Inspired's forced to take it, and then Canyon's able to get away to safety. Yeah, nearly got it with the red buff burn there, but just didn't quite have enough damage to actually finish him off. And uh, Chovy, at the very least, does deny the kill from the Ezreal, but Inspired getting a little bit of gold back, which is important for him to stay relevant in this game. You know, Canyon obviously maintains a very large farm advantage. Let's see here if Lehens can get away from this. Inspired and Quad chasing after the Maokai, who used the Flash to buy a little bit of extra time, but now it means there should be no way for him to get away from this. Quad will keep on chasing. Ball delivery complete as the enemy support is down. And again, we talked about it back in draft, boys. That's the main engage for Gen G. Without that setup, there's not really a way for them to safely approach for something like this dragon. Meanwhile, an arrow flies out. Keen going all out underneath the turret, but Whipple's looking to outplay here with the Dominus. It's a 3v1, but Whippo gets away for now. Canyon, the backup, the spear connects. Whippo with a flash away, and the TP is going to be way too late. Quad goes oh. in to find the shockwave, but a beautiful use of the stasis from Canyon. He stays alive. Shin G maintain a one kill advantage as Quad and Busio have to retreat. The tier one turret is down, and Gen G are holding the wrecking ball. That was such a critical spear there from Canyon. If he doesn't land that on Whippo, I don't think they can actually go for the dive, but of course he does because he is Canyon. We're not done yet. Inspired having to get away now. Dashing out of the river, throwing back the Glacial Prison. Looking to lock up Pays, who uses the cleanse to try to escape. Masu still firing back. 
back. FlyQuest is down 3,000 gold. They've got to be carry, very careful about these fights that they take because Gen G are at a point of comfort. Gen G continue to demonstrate their mastery over Macro as they lose lands and immediately, without hesitation, turn their attention to the top side of the map. Whippo thinking that he can just catch this wave, does a good job of surviving the initial dive, but three members wasn't enough. Genji had committed four to the top side of the map with Canyon coming in on the flank, and as Azale said, that spear was crucial. You look at the minimap, Canyon already making his way up, the Ash Arrow, the TP commitment, just this level of awareness of where Genji can play on the map to at the very least get something back for the Dragon was masterful. Yeah, I mean, it was really, really big, but Whippo played well to clear out the wave. If he didn't get attacked by that spear, I think you can just walk out the back and Quad can come in and actually TP in and save the wave. And Whippo knows that one hurts because not only does he go down, it's the flash, it's the TP, it's the ulti from Quad, it's them losing the tower either way. Yeah. That was a critical moment in the game and Whippo knows it didn't go their way. So Grubs are even. FlyQuest might be up a single Drake, but it's three turrets to nothing for Gen G. That is a huge part of this 3,000 gold lead they've built so far for themselves. Now Keen, yeah, he's far forward in the enemy jungle, but more importantly, he's Cassante. He has to commit the flash to get out, but he still stays alive and doesn't even lose a meaningful amount of health. Gen G, you just turn your attention to the minimap and you look at how much blue there is. FlyQuest barely have access into the river as the mid is being pushed in, top is being pushed in, Lahens is continuing to extend his vision line forward. Meanwhile, on the bot side of the map, Keen with a full level over Buepo is this immovable object. And who's at his side? Canyon. They're literally playing through every single part of the map right now, which usually shouldn't be possible, but they know how strong they are. Yeah, you're talking about a full level lead in top. It's a two level lead in the jungle. Whippo's Dominus and oh. Commander! An arrow through the heart! And Canyon's taking the payday! It pays from downtown, back to back arrows, nailing Whippo. Likewise, trying to look for some sort of a counterplay on top side, but they just can't find it. And Gen G are punishing Whippo time and time and time again. Beautifully done from Gen G. FlyQuest, let's see if they can find anything here. Inspired's gonna wrap around a little bit. Interrupts Keen, but he can go all out, just immediately using that as the escape lever. Inspired continuing to try to lock up the Gen.G top laner. Masu behind him here for the chase. Glacial Prison finds the mark, but it finds the mark in the middle of the minion wave, which makes it that much harder to find your maximum DPS with the Ezreal. The Mystic Shots just colliding with this trash instead of finding the target you want in the Cassante. You can see that FlyQuest is just kind of fishing at this point. There aren't many plays for them available on the map. They see if they can try and punish Keen, but don't quite have the damage to convert it into much. And the game, similar to game two, is very quickly snowballing out of control. It really is. And I mean, they may not have a Cassidy and they may not have a Jax, but Chovy is playing through the side lane constantly on this Tristana. And Keen, utilizing the massive advantage that he has built for himself, is just a brick wall that can constantly push in waves, constantly create avenues of attack for Canyon. And when we looked at game two, where Gen G won, it looked like they were doing a lot to FlyQuest of what FlyQuest did to them in the previous game in game number one, with the AD carry domination, with snowballing through that early game. And now when we look at game number four and compare it to game number three, it was FlyQuest's top and jungle in the previous game that were the vast majority of the lead. And now here in this latest episode, it's Gen G again, suplexing that and taking the lead for themselves. It absolutely is. You know, the bright spot for Fly though is that both of their carries are pretty close to where the Gen G carries are, and we'll see if they can find Keen now. They are committing a lot for a Cassante here. Whippo and Inspired chasing after him. Keen still trying to get away. Gen G bringing in a TP. Cassante still not even taking any meaningful damage at all. Continuing to push forward. Arrow doesn't hit the target, and Chovy's gonna flash back away. All out from Keen. Quad's under pressure on Whippo's about to die. Fly quest chased too far. Gen G are ready to punish, and they want even more. Beautiful engage from Kanan to keep on following it up. Quad barely trying to get away. He's got 200 HP remaining, and the Nidalee says no! It's nothing but a black and white screen for the FlyQuest solo laners, and Gen G want to take us to a game point! FlyQuest kept fishing, but they did not like what took the bait. The rest of Gen G were quick to collapse as Chovy TPs in and buys time for the arrival of Canyon. FlyQuest fall, another dragon to Gen G, and gentlemen, I feel like we're going to Silver Scrapes. I think so too. Gen G are just playing this game out so incredibly well. FlyQuest are gonna keep looking for opportunities, but the opportunities are gonna get 
fewer and further between. It feels like Gen G are doing just a perfect job of not allowing FlyQuest any meaningful way to fire back. Anytime FlyQuest looks for something, Gen G is ready to respond. An Ash Arrow from across the map, a teleport to show up and protect somebody, a fourth dude when three dudes can't get the dive done. Gen G is prepared here in this fourth game. I mean, they just can't kill Keen, right? You know, he's stacking so much armor, so Masu's not going to do it. Wimbo's not going to do it. You're relying on Quad, but at this point in the game, uh, There's just no way. And yeah. Oriana can't get it done. Maybe at four, five, six items can he threaten Keen, but it just takes no damage at this point. Massive, massive difference in power between these top laners. Keen now finally getting a little bit of MR here, too. You can see the Negatron Cloak with the additional cloth armor and inventory. This should be the Jack Show. And honestly, that's all he's going to need with yep. what you're talking about with the Oriana being this only AP threat. He's so far ahead of Whippo on the Renekton. And I mean, FlyQuest's only hope in this game is if or if it goes really, really, really long, right? You know, they need to get to this point in the game where Quad has Magic Ben, where he has a Death Gap, where he has all these items and the AP behind that Magic Ben, and where Masu and him can actually threaten the front line, because that is feeling like that is a good 20 minutes off, and I don't think Genji's going to give you that time. This is the clinical precision that we're used to seeing from Genji. Little room for FlyQuest to come back, and crucially, we think back to FlyQuest's team fights. That has been their avenue to victory, and Genji have denied them any sort of option to get those in this game. It's not been about the 5v5, it's the skirmishes, the 3v3s, the 2v2s, the fights that happen before the objectives even spawn. Perhaps a Baron could be FlyQuest way plank. back in. Whippo looking for the flank on Pays. Dominus Pop with the arrow to immediately try to stop the FlyQuest top laner. Sterix Gage to keep him alive. Keen's ready to keep on pushing forward here with the Pathmaker. Going in looking for a little bit more damage onto Quad. Whippo's going to be dropped first. Quad's going to go right with them. Whippo and Quad. The solo laner's down. A double kill for Chovy as Gen G do not stop here. They keep chasing the remaining FlyQuest players with Keen leading the charge. FlyQuest disengaged successfully, but Gen G run this rift. FlyQuest look for an avenue of attack, but at this point, the wallet difference is just too big. The idea from Whippo there, providing a gate for Busio to get onto the back line. The Shockwave combo connects, but it just doesn't do enough damage. Another Baron begun by Genji. FlyQuest knows they can't afford to give this one away, but what else is even going to happen? Chovy and Genji chasing after FlyQuest, killing Masu, burying Busio, and just making Inspired head home alone. And Genji just landed the knockout punch in this game number four with the Baron. That has to be it. Genji running away with this one, playing the map so incredibly well, knowing their limits in these fights, knowing how to extend the advantage to impossible lengths. Here we go again. FlyQuest still trying him. to stop it, but a TP behind him coming in from Keen. The Cassante that has run the whole game start to finish seals their fate. Canyon's unstoppable, and Quad is dead. Whippo and Inspired can't get anywhere close. Keen is a brick wall, and FlyQuest don't have any siege equipment. Inspired's trying to escape as Chovy jumps over the wall, but now FlyQuest is in an even rougher spot. Busio wants to make space for his team, but a third and Topo strike knocks back. Back to FlyQuest, still trying to run, but Gen G's stronger, Gen G's faster, Gen G's better. The Titans from the LCK refuse to go quietly into the night. FlyQuest have put up a valiant fight, but just look at the decimation. Good target focus there from Gen G, immediately peeling for Pays once he creates space. The Shockwave does connect onto Chovy and Canyon, but it barely tickles them with the damage done. FlyQuest have nothing left but to retreat. Exactly, and I mean, FlyQuest, they know it was always going to be a long shot in the position of this game, but you've got to look for those slim opportunities. This is Worlds. You don't get another series if you lose this one. You've got to leave it all out on the rift, and that's what they're trying to do here. Gen G, though, just far too strong in this fourth game, and it really starts to become about how are you feeling going into game number five? What are the picks going to be? What is the draft going to look like? Because FlyQuest likely will be going back to the blue side here, which we have seen so much success on in Worlds.
The hands using the blast cone to get away as FlyQuest just trying to get any sort of a pick they can, just trying to slow this down any way they can. It's only 26 minutes on the clock, but it is a 12,000 gold lead for Gen G's side as they continue pushing up here in the top lane. Chovy between his own rapid fire and the buff from Canyons Nidalee is an absolute machine gun on this Tristana. The DPS is out of control. He's got the quick blades. He's got the armor penetration on the Mortal Reminder, and he's got the rest of Gen G beside him. FlyQuest going in for their final Hail Mary. True Shot Barrage over the wall. Lehan's tanking up as Chovy gets back away. Inspire down to 300 HP, and Whippo does nothing. Shockwave on two won't matter. Inspire's about to bleed out. Chovy's dominating, and Keen won't stop. Double kill. Back over to Chovy. FlyQuest are going to have to be ready for game five, because Gen G are ready to clean this up. Masu and Inspired trying with everything they've got to defend the last two Nexus turrets, but Gen G is far too powerful. Lahins and Keen making the space. FlyQuest trying to hold on, but it's not gonna work. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Silver Scrapes.